I'm Graham Robinson. I'm Greg Robinson. And I'm Ed Dickens with Railroad Showcase. So when they used to break the locomotives in, they did it all the time. They'd send them out, they'd put them into a, a helper turn, or they'd work them on a slow drag where you could work and let those components just work together. Because all those packing segments are moving in those pistons and the valve is moving back and forth. And it's, it's sliding on newly machined surfaces. And we did all the machine work so we know that it's accurate, we know that it's smooth and nice, but you just don't wanna take any chances. We had to get to Ogden, we couldn't run the risk of messing something up. So you're not gonna see us flying down the track and even when we get the locomotive broken in, it's kind of contrary to our objective of letting people see the locomotive by running fast. We'll run, a, run fast on occasion. There are times we'll need to. But 40 miles an hour on this is comparable to 60 miles an hour on the 844. Smaller driver, all the machinery speeds, you know, all those things you got to think about. Right. Out of curiosity, what, what sort of materials are in all of the flexible joints for the front engine? It's the same material that they used. So we made all new bronze rings. That's a brand new bronze ring. But the, the spherical piece of the cast uh, steel piece on the inside was original, but it was worn. So what we did is we just changed the geometry of the spherical fit and we machined the opposite in that bronze piece. So by the time they came together, it was still in the correct relationship, <laughs> the same relationship. This is Denzel Clark. Come on over, Denzel. Dan. Yeah. Denzel's Denzel's a real deal. How are you? Uh, getting older. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> Very good to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm proud of you. Yep. You you made a monumental move here. Well, Denzel, awesome. we met Denzel when we were here when we brought the locomotive from California. And so. what's his experience? Denzel is is the real deal. You want to tell him what you did? I fired on this old boy big boy and the early steamers in the early 50s. Well, we converted it to oil. Yeah. And it, boy, it's now a lot it's easier oil. than when you had it. When I fired it, it uh, between here and Echo, it uh, used 27 ton of coal. Now, Ed's done a great job. We'll burn 1,500 gallons of fuel. So, did did you imagine that you would ever see one in steam again? No. We had some that were steamers, that were smaller, some that had diesel. But this guy is uh, one of the greatest men we've got in this country. Well, that's really kind of you. <laughs> we wanted to see you, and I'm sorry. I came. No, no, it's really, I was hoping I was going to see you. You know, you told me that story about the brakemen would go down and they'd climb up on the tender and they get down in the water tank right you go through the tunnel it was so hot and miserable the engineer and fireman they didn't have a choice they had to ride in the cab didn't you guys have the air valve down and they tried yeah. all kinds yeah, of things we to help you guys valve. out yeah. yeah we'd we'd uh would use some waste material and and wet it and put it in the blower and blow it on our face and just kind of and hunker then, down and then we would take our coat and put it over our head yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, but you know, you you had that throttle out. You know, it's not like you can ease off going through the tunnel. That throttle no. out. No, it's and that wild. engine just. Oh, that that Stoker jet. That Stoker jet. I bet you burned a few tons just going through the tunnel by oh, itself. We did. So you got all the cinders and all that smoke coming oh, right back in the cab. It was hot. And what if your stack hood doesn't work? Oh, that's oh. gonna really make a mess of things, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's really going to get hot I had, then. I, was, I had a student uh, fireman who was with me on one, and he was going to jump out. I and the engineer had to grab him and hold him. He yeah. said it killed him. It had killed him, yeah. <laughs> he told me the story when the uh, it was so hot and miserable, the brakemen, some of the brakemen, they were like, I, I can't take this. So they walk back, climb up on the tender, open the water tank, and by then the water was low, and there's a ladder in there, and they climb down on the ladder and then close the tank lid, and that's where they'd ride. <laughs> that's right. Those were the smart guys. Than that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I interrupted you. No, that's okay. We were done. We were going to oh, go up to the engine. You want to go meet Austin? There's Austin up there. Yeah. 
fast. Yeah. That kid knows more about big boys than anybody alive. Uh, Except here, you. Here's my friend. I'd like you to know him. Yeah, we met, we met at Cash Junction. We did. Yeah. How are you? Right. Good to see you. He's a fi uh, uh, retired engineer, and yeah, I he fired on, on this, too. <laughs> They were he a challenge down in oh, my yeah. day. Well, we converted this one to burn oil. Yeah. You'd love it. You just sit no there. No more cinders in the eyes. No. Yeah, it's a so, really so, good well, yeah. so, so you've, you've run one of these engines. I've fired on one of these. Two summers I did. In 53 the, and 54. When I come back in 55, they tore shoots, cold shoots down. That was it. Right. So what are, what, what are some of your favorite memories of, of, of being in the cab of these things? Well, one time, I was called off the extra board to help a fireman, that was in Evanston, to take in the, the stoker broke down coming into Evanston, and we tried shoveling the coal in there, and it took two firemen, and we got off the top, we went about 10 miles, then you drop off the wash that, we lost, the air got slow, the train set up, and we stopped there by the time we built the fire back up good, and then down the hill we went. <laughs> And you made and you made the rest of the run without stoker. Yeah, without stoker, we just shovel. We used to run them around the, the yard a little bit. These locomotives, but when we placed them in the roundhouse for repair, uh, the foreman would take us, and we would walk around the outside, and every stall had new brick. And he said that every uh, most of the firemen would run through. They couldn't stop this boy. Yeah. So I learned something. When I wanted to stop, I went in the emergency in there. <laughs> You're not going to take any chance. No. <laughs> yeah. See, the end of the stall was all new brick because they'd run through it. <laughs> they couldn't stop. Yeah. They had one place they called Jackson Hole where a guy named Jackson went through. <laughs> <laughs> the old engineers, the old timers. I used to want to have the steam right on 300. Oh, you bet. You didn't move. And they didn't oh, want yeah. that water popping off. Oh, yeah. Oh, the water. That's how this is. Some of them really got See that guy right up there, Austin? He's my fireman. Yeah. He is just like that all day long, right at 300. Yeah. That's what you got to do. We've got that exhaust steam injector on the other side. We completely rebuilt it. It works excellent. That's good. And, and I'd, I'd really like for you guys, if you're here tomorrow, I'd like you to see it. It's going to bring back some memories. You know, that exhaust steam ejector makes that certain noise. You pull it back, yeah. and the turbine goes, yeah. And then it would, you can watch it. It works perfect. We Re regulating reel, wheels all rebuilt. And, we uh, we live 60 miles north, and my wife broke her shoulder, her arm, her oh, no. I just brought her home yesterday. I don't think I can come back. Oh, darn. I had to leave today. I brought her from the hospital to the rehab, and she said to tell you hello. She knows how much we respect you and honor you. Well, thank you. You're one of the greatest men we ever met. Well, gosh, that's, that sure is an honor for you to say that. So that was part two of our interview with Ed Dickens. Over the next few weeks, we've got more material from the Utah trip. We're going to be chasing the big boy, and we're going to be looking behind the scenes at Promontory Summit. And of course, you guys know that these are only clips of the full episode. So for the full extended look at all this material, including the full extended interview with Ed Dickens, head over to rrshowcase.com and sign up to be a gold or silver spike member for access. Thanks for watching.